Yes, I'm a GraalPy developer. I work for Oracle Labs and we work on uh, GraalPy there, uh, which is a fast Python implementation. So what really is GraalPy is an alternative uh, implementation of Python. So the, the Python that you know that you're used to use is called uh, CPython. That's the reference, the standard implementation of Python. We are implementing the same, but uh, differently. And uh, we are clean room uh, implementation of the same. Uh, so what is GraalPy? It's a, a compatible implementation of uh, Python. Uh, compatible to the reference uh, CPython implementation. We believe that we are <clears throat> more compatible than any alternative Python has ever been. I will uh, show more details why we think uh, this is the case. Uh, GraalPy provides high performance execution of Python code and GraalPy seamlessly integrates with Java, including uh, Jiten compatibility mode. Uh, so let's see how we can get started uh, working with GraalPy or using or trying GraalPy. So the first mode is where you want to use a GraalPy as a C Python replacement. So basically, uh, it will run on GraalPy, but you would use it like C Python. Uh, this is what we call a GraalPy native standalone distribution. Uh, what it means that it is that it contains, it has no dependencies. It only contains the native executable Python uh, binary. That's the interpreter or the, the runtime that runs your Python code and the Python standard library, which uh, we mostly share with uh, CPython, uh, except for a few minor uh, changes, uh, including the uh, native extensions that you can find in the Python standard library. So if you want to use GraalPy in this mode, uh, you can through pyenv or conda, so you can just say pyenv install GraalPy dash desired version. Uh, if you feel adventurous, you can say pyenv install GraalPy dash dev, which will install the latest uh, development uh, build of uh, GraalPy. Uh, then you can say pyenv shelf GraalPy in your version and your shell will switch to uh, be using GraalPy instead of uh, the normal system Python. So then if you say Python 3 dash dash version, you will see that uh, in fact you're running on GraalPy and you can use it as you're used to. So you can, say, you can create a virtual environment, you can pip install packages, uh, etc. If you really want to be sure uh, that you're running on uh, GraalPy, you can also use this GraalPy launcher. So that's basically alias to Python 3, or actually Python 3 is an alias to GraalPy, but um, if you run through GraalPy launcher, yeah, you can be sure that they are not running any other Python implementation. Uh, the same uh, for Conda, if you don't like either of those, Python nor Conda, then you can just download the this binary distribution as a, a tarball or zip archive and, and just extract it on your system and run it. Um, there's another mode uh, how you can use GraalPy. Uh, GraalPy, I didn't say that yet, but GraalPy is based on this GraalVM technology, which itself is based on Java technology. That's an implementation detail that you don't need to care about if you don't want to but if Java happens to be your thing, or if you, for whatever reason, need to use Java, uh, then GraalPy is available also as a Java library. It's available on Maven Central, which is something like Python package index for Java people. Uh, this is how you can add it to your uh, Maven script. And uh, uh, below you can see how uh, you can invoke, or your, how you can create an interpreter from Java, and how you can invoke Python code from Java. You can exchange Java objects, uh, or send Java objects to Python and Python objects to Java and work with them in Java and all that. Uh, I will give more details later if we have enough time. Uh, there is also a Jiten compatibility mode that you can use if you want to migrate from uh, Jiten to GraalPy. Uh, GraalPy works best on uh, a Java distribution that's called GraalVM JDK but it does work on any other JDK uh, of version 21 and higher. So let's take a closer look at uh, GraalPy. So as I said, it's not a fork of CPython, it's a different implementation. It is based on the GraalVM technology. More specifically, it's based on uh, something that's called Truffle Language Implementation Framework. And the idea behind that is that you use one uh, high performance virtual machine to implement and run multiple programming languages. Uh, it's all very fascinating, but I wouldn't go into uh, any details here because 
we wouldn't have the time for that. Uh, GraalPy is uh, open source. It's uh, licensed under this permissive uh, license. Um, it is supported on Linux and Mac OS, in both cases on, uh, on um, AMD 64 and AR64 architectures, so also on Mac uh, M1, M2. Uh, it has uh, limited support for Windows, but it's not because we want to ignore Windows, but uh, because this is just a work in progress and we uh, would like to eventually reach a full support uh, for Windows as well. Um, there are two distributions. Um, or two, two types of distributions that you can get. Uh, first one is a community edition, which is built fully from open source components. Uh, the other one we call Oracle, uh, GraalPy. Uh, this is uh, built from the same source uh, when it comes to, uh, in regards to uh, GraalPy itself, uh, but it contains uh, some more advanced uh, uh, just-in-time compiler optimizations um, that are not open source. Uh, those optimizations are, however, language uh, agnostic. So, um, anyway, so uh, let's talk about GraalPy compatibility. Uh, GraalPy supports the C extensions uh, API. Uh, so, you can uh, in pip install uh, many well known uh, packages such as NumPy, Pandas, uh, machine learning models from uh, Hugging Face. And uh, we ourselves uh, run the test suites of the top 600 uh, Python package index packages uh, every day. Uh, we monitor the tests and uh, fix incompatibilities. Uh, it's not like all the uh, 600 uh, packages pass 100%, uh, uh, but we have quite a good rate. It's changing every day. Uh, and so we believe that uh, we can write, uh, run uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, existing Python code out there. Uh, so to, given all that, to best of our knowledge, we believe that we are the most compatible alternative Python uh, to date. Uh, GraalPy is included in the many Linux images if there are any package or native extensions out there. And GraalPy is also available on uh, GitHub Actions Setup Python. So if there are any Python package authors, uh, no, nothing stops you from uh, adding uh, CI jobs for testing uh, GraalPy compatibility. Uh, yes, but uh, let's be honest, there are some rough edges there uh, that we are working on smoothing out. Uh, for now, uh, most packages, believe it or not, don't uh, provide binary wheels for GraalPy. So when you pip install package XYZ, uh, what pip is going to do is is going to download the source distribution of XYZ and it's going to build it from source. Uh, which in itself should be fine, but if you've ever built things from source, uh, you know that uh, sometimes this requires a non-trivial setup. Um, and, that, and it also takes some time. Um, however, uh, we want to improve that, so we are contributing uh, GraphPy support to CI build wheel. Uh, and uh, we are also thinking about supporting uh, the stable ABI. So that's uh, uh, basically an ABI for which you build and it can run on any uh, CPython version from the version that you've built uh, to any higher. And if we support it, it could also run on uh, GraalPy. So I think the stable ABI in itself is very interesting thing that desires uh, much wider adoption. Uh, there are talks about it tomorrow. If if, if you're interested. So GraalPy performance. Uh, GraalPy uses uh, just-in-time compilation for Python code. Uh, uh, let's illustrate this on this example where this PyBoy application had been rewritten to Cython to provide enough performance on CPython. Uh, but if you run on GraalPy the original pure Python code, it happens to be within a few percent of the performance of the, of the uh, natively compiled Cython code running on CPython. Uh, if, uh, yeah, if, um, if I may simplify this a, a lot, Cython is, uh, is like a C with a Python syntax, so it allows you to kind of quickly port your Python code to C. So basically we are uh, comparable to uh, uh, C code here in this case. Uh, there, is, uh, there are some results from the Pi performance suite. Um, take this with a grain of salt because it's a um, benchmark suite. It's 
there's no guarantee that this will be representative of your concrete uh, Python application. And it's also a moving target, like everything in this graph is moving target, Python, GraalPy, the performance suite itself. Um, yeah, but life is not all roses, and uh, there's no free lunch. Uh, so because GraalPy uses just-in-time compilation, it needs some time to warm up before it reaches its uh, peak performance. Uh, the idea there roughly is that uh, there is a specializing interpreter that needs to interpret your code for a while to specialize the bytecodes, and those specialized bytecodes are then uh, the input for the uh, just-in-time compiler, which can then produce um, better code. Uh, because there is this feedback from runtime, uh, this, this feedback provides more accurate information to the just-in-time compiler than if you just use the code without executing it. Um, so this whole thing takes some time, and then also when you actually start the just-in-time compilation, the compilation itself takes some time. And the more advanced the just-in-time compiler is, the more time it's going to take to compile the code. Um, another big problem here is our native extensions, uh, because uh, the native code in those extensions is opaque to the just-in-time compiler. It, it cannot thr see through them. So what it means is that when in the just-in-time compiler uh, compiles your Python code, Python bytecodes, uh, when it reaches a call to native extension, uh, the only thing it can do is then just emit the, the binary, the assembly for making the call but it cannot go into the native code and see what it's doing and use that for the optimizations. And uh, not only that, because it cannot see what the native code is doing, it, <clears throat> uh, it must assume the worst about the native code. It must assume the worst about how it uh, mutates the global environment and things like that. So uh, this hinders many important optimizations. Uh, by the way, uh, most that I'm saying, I believe, also applies to the CPython just now compiler in making, because uh, those problems are not specific to GraalPy, they are specific to uh, just in time compilation technology in general. Uh, so, when you get the best performance with GraalPy, well, when most of your code is Python, which in a way, if you think about it, is great because, like, we are at this conference because we like Python, not because we like C, right? Or Rust. Um, so, uh, why GraalPy? Because of the performance, but it depends, of course. Uh, you need to benchmark your use case and see if it uh, can be faster. If you happen to have uh, an application where most of the time is spent in uh, Python code, uh, GraalPy can provide a great improvement about benchmark your use case, and also when you do benchmark, make sure to warm up the application, um, because, as I said, GraalPy needs some time to warm up. Uh, another uh, tool that we provide in GraalPy, uh, is we call GraalPy standalone binaries. Uh, the idea is that you can package uh, your whole Python application, its dependencies, and any resources like data files, uh, etc into a single executable binary. The trick here is that uh, the Python implementation in GraalPy is using uh, a, a file system abstraction that normally goes to the actual file system, but you can replace it with whatever you like. You can implement your own file system abstraction. So in this case, we have a, a implementation that uh, is reading the data directly from the binary uh, that we produce. So you, the only thing that you need to distribute is the one file, that's the binary, and everything is in there. Uh, there's uh, one downside that we are working on uh, improving, and uh, far, uh, that's that it produces quite large binaries. Uh, here is an example of a Pygame game uh, that you can package as a single executable like this. Uh, it uh, produces even executable on uh, Windows, as far as I know. Uh, and this is the invocation of the standalone module that uh, you would use to uh, create this uh, standalone binary. Uh, another uh, big use case for GraalPy is, of, of course, the uh, Java integration. This is an example how you can create a, uh, one interpreter, uh, create a function foo in it, then you retrieve the function into a Java variable, 
And from Java, you can invoke the function, giving it uh, 40 and two. And in the Python, we will actually execute the addition, and then you will get back the result, which should be 42. And then in the same Java application, you can create another context. And if you try to call foo in that context, you will get uh, name foo is not defined because that's a different isolated context. So you can create uh, multiple isolated contexts. Um, and also, uh, you can uh, catch exceptions from Python, uh, like we see in the example. This is a bit more advanced example uh, where we use the transformers pipeline. Uh, so we create a pipeline, and uh, from the Python code, we return a lambda to the Java code. We save that in a variable, and then from Java, we can actually invoke the pipeline. So this is an example of, of integration of uh, uh, quite non-trivial Python package uh, into Java with CrawlPy. And uh, you can go even further. You can, uh, if you, uh, for example, need to share your Python package library with another team that uses Java, for example, and you want to create a Java binding for it, uh, you can use features like that uh, where uh, you just need to define uh, an interface on the Java side and then uh, you define a class on the Python side, or maybe you already have a class on Python side uh, that uh, follows that interface. And uh, we have this facility that allows you to cast the Python object uh, into uh, the Java interface, and then the rest of the Java application can work with that object <laughs> as if it was uh, just a plain Java object implementing that interface. Uh, um, be com completely obli oblivious to the fact that it actually under the hood it calls uh, Python. Another uh, use case for this uh, we believe is uh, providing Python scripting capabilities in Java applications. So this is an example where imagine you have existing uh, web-based uh, application with Java backend that's showing uh, some uh, table retrieved somewhere from databases or something and uh, you want to provide your users with a uh, way to filter uh, the data with uh, something more advanced than just uh, checkboxes and combo boxes, etc. So in this case, uh, we allow the user to write the filter in uh, Python. And uh, GraalPy can be used as a Jython replacement. Uh, GraalPy is Python 3. Uh, Jython is Python 2.7, so if you want to or need to have to migrate to Python 3 and you still want to use Jython, that's uh, something that we can offer. Uh, we support many of the Jython features, not all. Uh, if you have a Jython use case, then please uh, reach to us, report on GitHub. We want to know how people use Jython and what we can support. Uh, there are some features that, um, if enabled by default, would negatively impact the performance. Uh, so those must be enabled by the options uh, below. And this is an example of uh, a code that would run on Jython as well as on CloudPy that uh, is creating some uh, uh, window from Java. So in summary, uh, CloudPy is an alternative uh, Python implementation that is compatible. We believe it is uh, the most compatible alternative Python to date. It provides high performance, especially for uh, pure Python code. Uh, it seamlessly integrates with Java, including uh, Jython compatibility mode. Uh, if you want to get CrawlPy, you can uh, install it through PyN. Uh, the second code listing should be the installation through Conda. Um, I'll change that. And uh, if, you, if Java is your thing, you can get a CrawlPy Java library uh, so that you can embed Python into your Java applications. Uh, yes, and that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Stefan, for this nice presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can move to microphones or you can ask in the Discord channel. Uh, thanks for the talk. How good it is on running like native applications like GUIs? Um, yeah. Do you mean uh, GUIs like a uh, Java GUIs or Python GUIs? Like, like if you want to build a GUI, like PyQt is terribly slow. I'm not happy with it. 
I'm looking okay. for an alternative. Uh, is there something you could advise? Well, in, in theory, you can use uh, you could use the Java GUI libraries from within uh, GraphPy, uh, like I just had uh, in this example. I believe this should be quite fast because the uh, and it's something I should have mentioned the, the sort of boundary between Java and Python for GraphPy is very fast because GraphPy is running on Java. Uh, so that's one option you have uh, for uh, libraries like PyQt or um, uh, Tkinter, etc. Uh, those are going to run on with about the same speed uh, as on C Python. Like there's nothing because those are native libraries, and we just, as I explained with the Justin Dam compiler, we just can't do anything else than just call the native code, and then the native code will be the same for us as for uh, C Python. So, yeah, does, does that answer your question? Uh, somewhat. So, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I mean, feel free to talk to me after the talk. So I have one question. So, when you, for example, in, in export it to Windows, which I know is limited, is it like exe file. How do you run uh, the program? Uh, so you mean this one? Yeah, this one. How, how do I run uh, which program? The, the result? Of yeah, this? so is it is like a jar file? Is it like exe file? No, it produces exe file. And it has no one dependencies. Yeah, so it should be like uh, portable to uh, any Windows system. Okay, and do you have some approximate size of this large? No, this is large, so like we're talking hundreds of megabytes. Hundreds, okay, I see. Right. And what about Kotlin language? Can you use it with Kotlin? Yes, absolutely. So any like a JVM language like Kotlin Scala works uh, fine with this. So like uh, you would be using Java APIs, but uh, I believe Kotlin has a good story for that, for interoperability with Java. So it should be just fine. Uh, in Scala, uh, the interoperability with Java is maybe not as great, but it's still quite good. So that's uh, we've had uh, users using uh, GlaPy and other our languages from Scala, and I think Kotlin should be the same. All right, okay, thanks. Thank you. In Discord channel also there is no question. Um, okay, thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, there will be another session at uh, 11.55. Uh, you can stay here or you can change room. Uh, please accept this small gift from us. Thank you. Thank you.